Okay, this print's got a couple of minutes to go before it's done and then I can really show you uh, what's been going on. But basically, I put in two linear rails, a rail here and here. And we'll get into that. About a year ago I wanted to try as an experiment. This is a Persa i3 MK3S. I wanted to do that update. Let's close in on these uh, pictures here. Like so. <clears throat> so I'd been on uh, eBay and I'd noticed that the price for the linear rails was was quite reasonable. It was fifteen dollars with free shipping, and that was a three hundred and fifty millimeter long linear rail, which ended up you know cutting a, a little bit off of to to fit the machine. So I went ahead and ordered two of those and uh, four T nuts so I could secure them to the railing. So step one is, of course, is to, to take off the bed. And let's see if we can get this to go to picture two. So pulled all the bed screws and get you down to your, to your raw bed. And hopefully that's showing up on the camera okay. So at this point, everything's together. I end up taking the front panel off and letting it drop down out of the way. It's going to make it a lot easier to uh, put the T-nuts in and all that kind of stuff. So here it is with the uh, the rail rods gone. That whole part of the, the aluminum frame for the for the bed is removed. I went and left my trays in. There was no reason to take the trays out. But like the next step was to pull these bolts, let the uh, front drop down. I'd already unscrewed the two screws for the um, idler so I could lift the whole aluminum bed unit away, support frame, and. This is sliding in the T-nuts. At the same time I ordered the uh, linear rails off eBay, I ordered these T-nuts to slide into the, to the rod to hold them in. Just going to lay the linear rails right on top here. They'll, they'll pass through these areas back here. And uh, I took the two rails out to the shop, measured the length that I wanted to, to fit in there, and cut them. You have to use a um, well, I'm not quite sure what, what they call it, but it's, it's a fibrous um, kind of blade and you put it on your skill saw and it's for cutting metal. Since it's uh, tempered metal, you can't cut it or touch it with a hacksaw. You can't even drill a hole in it. But uh, you get these really expensive fiber blades and put them on your skill saw and you can cut them. So the first thing I notice is that I can lay the rail in and it would pass through the cutouts in the frame no problem, <clears throat> but the carriage would just hit. And I also noticed that the complete rail assembly is lower in profile than the total height that the old rod and the UM bearings did by about two to three millimeters lower. So I had two options at this point. One, I could file the edges down right where these carriages were hitting as they passed back, or I could go ahead and raise the whole thing up the two to three millimeters to make it the same height that it used to be in the first place. So I decided I'd raise it up. And I could have done that a couple of ways. I could have just put some flat washers under there and just raised the two rails up, but I didn't have any. But I did have some scrap aluminum. So I grabbed some uh, scrap aluminum and in American terms it was like an eighth of an inch thick. And the width didn't really matter as long as it was as wide as the rails are a little bit wider. In this case it was wider popped a couple holes in it to match where I ha we're going to run my T-nuts. Went ahead and painted it black so everything would uh, look better in the end. And slapped those down and bolt the rails right in. I think I used uh, 3 millimeter by 12 millimeter long screws out of the extra bag that came with the uh, printer. And I think we're getting... Yep, so got them bolted down and then when to put the aluminum support frame back in. Interesting thing is the uh, two holes that already exist in the frame where the U-bolts used to go, they're already spaced exactly right for the carriage bolts and you can go ahead and, and drill the extra two and put four bolts in there if you want. It's kind of uh, unneeded though. 
So I went ahead and ran one of my carriages clear in the back and I put the other one, you know, where it's going to be. But the interesting thing is when you put the one in the back and catch the holes, it ends up being exactly the same length in placement, physically placement, as if the UM bearing was still in there. And that's important because when this machine, you know, out of homes, it jams against the back support. So that all ended up being exactly the same. So homing works just like it should. The only tricky part about lining these up is when I put this first, I put this rail in first uh, by measuring front and back and everything, got it centered as well as I could, tightened it down, and then when I put this rail in, I used my, uh, you know, I measured from one rail to the other, front and back, so I knew the two rails would be perfectly perpendicular. It made it a lot easier when I went to tighten down on my uh, two carriages so that everything would roll super smooth and not have a problem. And it, and it does, it was real smooth. And basically just a picture of the machine together so you can see the two rails and of course you can see the machine is running over here right now. It should be, uh, should be getting just about ready to finish up. Let's, uh, then I'll probably have to go to handheld to uh, show you anything different than you haven't already seen. But again, I didn't do this because there was anything wrong with the design uh, of the purse or the way it is. I just did it because I always wanted to just see what it would, how hard it would be, and would it work okay, and how difficult would it be, you know, just for the fun of doing it. Oh, good, print just finished. So we can get the print out of the way, which, by the way, was coming off the board anyway, so I'm lucky we finished when we did. And let's go a little bit handheld here. See if I can show you anything different. And here you can see the, the rods in the back and how everything passes through. You get your rods there. I don't know that there's much more I can't show you that I didn't already show you in those other pictures. I just thought you might find it interesting. It, uh, it's 15, I got uh, 30 bucks in the two rails and the, the four T-nuts were another three or four bucks or so. And it wasn't much of a job, it took maybe an hour to trim them down. I cut down the ends that were going to be in the back. Left the uh, support that the rod used to uh, fit in because that's actually works as part of the bumper that jams for the, for the homing of the whole thing. So when I cut them short, I cut them figuring that would still be in there. I mean, really the slickest way to do it would be to have just a single rod dead center, the same way that I did when I did my TiVo flash. But in order to have done that, then I would have to relocate my, my idler, and I would have to move the uh, stepper drive motor over, and then that would make this slot would need to be a little bit wider because everything would have been moved over. So that all seemed like a lot more work than just bolting something down. Basically after I trimmed these it just came down to bolting it down. If I didn't like it, it was going to be really easy to put the original rods back in and the original bearings back in and just keep it going. But uh, so far I'm liking it. It uh, moves super smooth. It, uh, doesn't have any of the wobble that you have with all your other bearings up down left right everything so it's it's better in that regards and it wasn't expensive if you got an extra 30 bucks or so you can find the rails and the t-nuts that you need to do it on uh, eBay and they came really quick they came in in less than a week